Welcome to Bispex Technology Show. Now, this is a show where we highlight how technology makes an impact on people's lives. Now, today we feature Maran uh, Virumandi. He's the managing director and founder of Doctor on Call. Maran, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Pleasure to be on. Now, Maran, give us an overview of Doctor on Call and how you've evolved in the business since you started it in 2016. Right. Um, Doctor on Call is a digital health uh, platform. Effectively, what we, uh, we do encompasses a whole range of uh, healthcare services from um, telehealth services. That was our uh, initial uh, offering in 2016. We also do medication delivery, uh, in which we offer medication delivery right to the doorstep of the patient's homes and offices. Uh, specifically prescription uh, drugs, and we've now expanded the range to, to 10,000 over uh, schemes. Um, back uh, over to 2017, we, we then identified healthcare education as being a major uh, issue in, in, in terms of people consuming healthcare services. They were unaware of you know, uh, prescription drugs, side effects, symptoms, and, and having uh, you know, a lot of myths or, or challenges in their heads, right? So we then launched our own uh, healthcare blog and portal. Mm -hmm. um, it's really off to a, a roaring success. And, and since then, we now have about 2 million people visiting us on a monthly uh, uh, basis Fantastic. to consume wow. our healthcare uh, content. Uh, and we've, we've gone to make it really easy to consume, right? From videos to listicles to FAQs and, and forums, which are moderated by doctors, um, uh, answering many of the questions that the, the patients have. Um, based on our early success, we, we understood that the, the healthcare market in Malaysia uh, really needed payer intervention, intervention by the insurance companies, the corporates, who were uh, big payers of the healthcare bills. Uh, by and so we crafted specific products for the insurance market and the uh, corporate market um, called Doc Assist, Doc at Work. Um, and, and we now count um, about 10 insurers and a couple of hundred uh, corporates who have embedded our product offerings into their uh, medical cards or their, their insurance programs. So effectively, it allows their members and their employees to, to use our services um, fast forward, we, we, we launched our online pharmacy and, and 2020 happened when we uh, partnered the government to offer our telehealth services. And since then, we've broadened our range of services to include uh, booking of specialist services, lab services, as well as home nursing. So now we like to think that we are able to offer end-to-end -end services from telehealth right up to uh, having the doctor's visit you at home or you'll be able to see them in a, at their clinician office. Now, so it, it sounds like you've built a little ecosystem for yourselves in terms of partners and customers. So you partner the insurance companies, you partner healthcare payers in general, so that's corporate as well. You partner the Ministry of Health uh, as, as part of your offering. So what is your business model like? How do you make money? So spot on, uh, Brian. We, as an ecosystem or a, a platform play, we, we help, uh, we monetize from both the supply side and as well as the demand side. So um, in, in short, with the insurers, we have a subscription program in which they sign up and, and we collect a per member per annum fee to service their members' healthcare needs. Right. Um, we also uh, charge specific for specific uh, interactions, be it uh, for the consults or the medications or the medication deliveries and the bookings on top of uh, what we already offer to the, uh, to the insurers. Um, we also do, um, we also partner uh, pharmaceutical companies and offer medical content or or effectively in layman's term, advertisements, right? 
Um, because of the restrictive nature of uh, medical advertisements, uh, we offer the, the eyeballs of two over a million uh, Malaysians or, and now expanding across the region coming to our sites um, for them to, to read you know, properly curated articles uh, that are provided by, uh, by these pharmaceutical companies too. Um, moving forward, we also work with the uh, pharmaceuticals and the hospital groups, the, uh, the clinic chains, to actually also offer subscription services for them to be able to uh, leverage on our technology platform uh, to reach out to either the, the, um, the individuals or the corporates and, and the insurers. Now, how do you get around the regulatory framework that is healthcare? Because one of the things that you're doing, it's, it's, it's a very highly regulated industry. It is also something, for example, in pharmaceuticals. Um, Malaysia is uh, not a prescription market. It's a dispensing market. So doctors can prescribe uh, uh, just as pharmacies can. How do you do that online? What specific regulations do you have to comply with? Right. Um, so there's a whole host, like uh, a plethora of uh, regulations, and you rightly said that it's one of the perhaps most regulated uh, uh, industries in Malaysia, or be it in any 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 part of the world, right? Um, so we took a pragmatic approach. Um, we we worked with our our legal team uh, to identify the way we could provide our services in a responsible manner. Uh, while at the same time ensuring that uh, we could meet the customer services and customers' expectations. Um, but I think the trick was to engage Ministry of Health uh, early on. And we've been fortunate to, to have uh, visionaries in the uh, Ministry of Health uh, comprising of you know, uh, Tan Sri uh, DG, right, the Director General, who, um, who was, um, I suppose, responsible for setting up um, um, multi-agency you know, um, organizations such as Digital, Digital Health Malaysia mm -hmm. to work with uh, participants of the industry such as us um, to then craft out um, uh, approaches as well as uh, guidelines for us to work within uh, in the absence of clearly defined uh, regulations covering telehealth or medications or, or data uh, being, being held by uh, agents, uh, organizations such as ours. So the way has been you know, through a collaborative uh, exercise, working with the Ministry of Health, the other participants in the industries, as well as, um, as, well as you know, uh, making sure that we keep the customers happy. Now, how has your, so obviously you, you've evolved your services over the last few years. How has your customer customer base evolved since you started in 2016? So you know it, it's it's uh, it's interesting to reflect back right on our early days. So um, being the first in Malaysia, and I, I think like perhaps even the one of the first few in, in Southeast Asia, um, people were not too clear on on telehealth and digital health um, uh, as a whole, and so. Uh, the people who were, or the customer groups that were using us were folks who really didn't have much uh, options. So um, in, in the early days, a lot of the people reaching out to us were, were talking about uh, sexual health, women's health and women's health. Um, health, um, you know, health topics which were, which they found it to be a social taboo or, or areas which they were not comfortable sharing in, in a physical clinic, right? Um, uh, because of their misguided fear of actually sharing this information with a medical practitioner, right? Um, and so they would, use, they would use our forum, our telehealth to actually talk to a medical doctor about, you know, the dangers of, uh, say, uh, a risky uh, interaction that they had, right? Or, or you know the dangers of of, of, of that, and, and it could even encompass uh, sub subjects such as family planning. But as our our uh, traffic grew, um, and and the insurance companies and the corporate started adopting us, and Ministry of Health themselves started using us, and the pharmaceuticals started uh, you know uh, trusting us. 
I think that gave a very clear signal to the customer groups. And, and now we, you know, we count uh, a pretty wide demographic of or a slice of the Malaysian demographic um, using us from people who, who have chronic conditions uh, um, or have long-term medication needs, such as uh, patients afflicted by diabetes, hypertension, heart problems, and cholesterol, or um, people who uh, need a way to actually research on a topic that is, um, you know, um, acute or, or expensive for that matter, right? People who are looking for fertility treatments or, or surgical interventions. And there's no, there's no bookings.com for healthcare where you can just jump on there and, and find out the price of a, a hotel in Bali yeah. sitting, you know, thousands of miles away. And, and the, the current approach of, you know, asking your aunt and your cousins who happen to be the medical uh, fraternity just doesn't work. And, and so now we're getting a huge traction of our, uh, or part of the demographic uh, using our services. Now, Maren, um, you started this business uh, 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 in 2016. Who's the, did you have co-founders? How did you start the business and how have you been funded so far? Well, um, I, I was fortunate that um, I came from a consulting uh, background and had a really good set of uh, people who were guiding me as well as uh, working with me. So Hazwan Najib, um, my co-founder, joined me pretty much early in, in the journey. When I, when I reached out to him and I stumbled into the healthcare space, right, uh, coming from technology and, and management consulting and, and saw how healthcare due to the regulations, due to uh, certain prohibitions, um, was at least 10 years behind um, the other industries, be it the, the fintechs or the telcos in terms of adopting uh, the new technologies. And, and so I, I reached out to him and said, mate, you know, um, we, we do this for a living, guiding clients uh, down this, this, this journey. So why don't you join me? We went off to, to research uh, the big players in the US, be it the Teladocs, the MWell, or in China with Ping An Good Doctor and, and many other players. And, and we thought that you know, this is a great opportunity uh, to jump in. Um, and so it's been a, a journey of um, investing into our own uh, proposition. So we've been self-funded uh, thus far. Um, but um, over in 2018 and 19, we, uh, we, you know, we pretty much exhausted uh, the funds because we didn't know that the journey was going to uh, take a, a fair bit of time and a fair bit of uh, effort and, and, and capital. Um, and we were, we've been also very fortunate to, to get family and friends, especially a couple of the partners from the consulting firms, uh, as well as um, you know, people who, who have a like-minded vision that healthcare in this part of the region, right, Southeast Asia, needs to get on with the times, right? And so they, they saw that uh, we had put in the hard yards and, uh, and they've then joined us in that, in that journey. So okay, so how much have you investment. raised so far in terms of investment? So I'm unable, unable to disclose the, the numbers uh, for you, but um, I would say that, you know, we've, again, take a very, very practical approach, right? Um, we've built all our solutions in-house. So having led uh, technology projects, um, I, I got in um, our developers and started working with them. We also have a small office in, in Bangalore in which we leverage uh, a partner to actually do some custom development. And so I would say that, you know, the, the capital that we've raised um, is a fraction of what we compare to our peers around the region. Um, because of the of the of the reliance on ourselves building very dedicated products for our customer groups, and, uh, and also the the marketing approach, which is more health education focused rather than uh, burning money on Google's or, or the Facebook, uh, which you know sometimes really uh, evaporates your your marketing budget. Well, absolutely, because you know there's a there's a scary statistic that I just saw, uh, read a couple of days ago. Out of every dollar of marketing spend in Australia, and uh, digital advertising spend, 82% goes to Google and Facebook. And 
And this is another, that, so it's validating what you're saying as well in terms of money that's that's literally evaporates in front of you as you spend it. Out of every dollar in startups in the Silicon Valley, over 60 cents goes to Facebook and Google. So means oh, every venture capital dollar, 60 plus percent goes, uh, 60 plus cents goes to Facebook and Google. So it's not going to the product, it's all going into digital ads. So I think that that's something that probably validates uh, why people like yourself are able to build out. Yes, it takes a little bit slower, but you've got a much more solid foundation as a result of that. You're, you're right, you're right. And we, we've learned it. I mean, I was, uh, just to echo that fact, right? Um, we had our content team um, look at the Google uh, ads in the early days. And um, I think I can I never forget that he turned back to me and said, you know, Maren, if you do go at this rate, um, you're going to pay for a BMW by the, uh, by the end of this quarter, right? Because it, it really consumes, right? Uh, if you want to run a, a multidisciplinary uh, campaign, right, to cover the multiple uh, specialties. Um, and that's when we took a step back and we, we decided that we'll take the part of developing all this hot, hot content and be the web MD of Malaysia and, and this part of the region. And that's resulted us in uh, bearing a lot of dividends, uh, but also um, allowed us to sleep at night because just in case you switch off your, your, your you know, social media uh, tap, you're not gonna have a plummet in terms of your customer adoption and, and, and rates as well as revenues. Exactly. Now, your business has probably been impacted quite positively as a result of the pandemic. Perhaps you could share with us how, how the dynamics of the business has changed. Right, so prior to 2019, and so it's, it was interesting, right? Because we were in, in China in December 2019, just prior to the outbreak of uh, the, the, uh, the, the pandemic. And we were talking to the lines of uh, Ping An, Good Doctor, and Ali Health, and the rest of the players in China. We're talking about doing hundreds of thousands of consults on a daily basis, and you know it just validated our our idea that this was going to be the way of the future. Uh, but they were they were just restrictions around the certain part of the payer groups and part of the governmental groups in terms of or, or pharmacy groups in terms of adopting that. Um, and then we came back to Malaysia, we went as business as usual. Um, and then the, we got a call from the, the Ministry of Health, but the minister's office asking us that their phone lines were inundated due to the uh, outbreak or the misinformation that was being spread around about this so at that point in time called the Wuhan virus, right? And we then offered our telehealth solution because that was the, the right thing to do, right? You just couldn't have your CDC uh, hotlines being burnt out. You, the patients needed to talk to the doctors. Um, and by providing our platform, we had about five over a million people reaching out to us during uh, or through our platform to the Ministry of Health Professionals uh, during the height of the condition. But the key thing that changed at that point in time was this perception um, that, that telehealth was just some foreign or some nice to have um, in the minds of the customers as well as the minds of the, of the providers and, and the payers. So this mind shift um, followed by the, that, that was also reinforced by the long period durations, right, of, of MCO or the mandatory control orders, the restricted uh, movements, um, the, the fear of people going to the hospitals, especially people who are in chronic conditions or who are at, at risk, um, allowed them to, to continuously try the digital health platform. Okay. And so uh, that went on for a while. It tapered down a little bit uh, towards the back end of the year, but then it picked up, unfortunately, due to uh, the condition. And um, and now I think it's, it's beginning to be, you know, um, a real alternative uh, for people to uh, in seeking seeking for healthcare uh, services. And Maran, have you also seen a take up because of this increased uh, uh, need for information regarding vaccination? 
good point, Brian. And um, I um, was was actually really surprised um, as I um, early in, in in the year when I started talking to a whole bunch of folks, um, um, older folks, right, uh, and family members about the misinformation uh, surrounding vaccination, from conspiracy theories to uh, myths to a palpable fear of of um, why are we, the older folks, right? I'm talking to the, the folks who are over 65, being the guinea pigs of a government-run program, right? Okay. Um, and 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 it it is you know it's just you know all over WhatsApp. Uh, fortunately, you know, face I don't think Facebook really allows for much of those uh, those myths, but it's all over uh, their WhatsApps, and 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 so they they are now beginning to turn. To credible sources, right, and and that's where we see ourselves uh, playing again a, a pivotal role in addressing this misinformation, similar to the role that we played um, this time last year with the whole COVID nineteen uh, fear. Okay, Maran, because the shackles and the 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 mental challenges of adoption have been shattered because of COVID nineteen, so companies like yourself have ridden the way. What new initiatives have, are you uh, rolling out or have rolled out that will accelerate the adoption of digital health and also then uh, uh, benefit users tremendously? Right. So um, we, we, we had um, a, a long, hard look at our uh, plans moving um, to uh, the five-year plans, right? And we decided that we really need to accelerate that into 2021 um, to not only catch the, uh, the momentum, but also to make um, available these the services which are, which are out there. Um, besides providing a, effectively a platform for healthcare providers and, and payers to, to interact with and, and patients to procure their services, we see that the, the biggest area that will benefit the, the patients, right, um, would be a platform that provides their healthcare information regardless of the different providers. So just to illustrate the points, if you were to walk into different hospitals within uh, um, the, the country, you would literally not be given your healthcare information in, in an easy to uh, access manner. You yeah, obviously it's get all it from distributed data. Exactly. And so to have the information on a single platform so that um, your providers or, or your, your receiving providers or your new providers will be able to make those uh, decisions without having to impose another set of diagnostics, right? Would greatly reduce uh, the barriers in patients seeking for healthcare, you know, alternative treatments or for them to even lower down the entire burden of healthcare cost. Yes. And so um, the, we, 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 we came up with this term, right, to be the maps of healthcare. Effectively, like how the, uh, the maps, the financial healthcare provider in Malaysia has allowed for, you know, information to, uh, financial information to flow uh, seamlessly across the, the multiple banks. And, and, we, we see ourselves uh, now that we're receiving a huge amount of traction and, and, and traffic um, um, being in, in this enviable position to actually offer this, right? So the, regardless of the different providers, uh, the patients can come in and have their healthcare records stored in a single repository and it'll be captured through their multiple interactions with the different providers or, or the payers. So your claim so data, I your prescription, your health records will be all kept over there. And, and would you be doing that? Would you hold that repository? So, yes, the, the information will be uh, within our, um, our, yeah, our storage. Uh, but nevertheless, it's something that the patients can uh, opt to keep, right? And, uh, and, and, you know, have it live in our systems. Now, Maran, as, as long ago as 1996, when the... the the government rolled out the MSC telemedicine initiatives, of which I worked on as well. There was a, a one of the flagship applications was uh, of the four healthcare applications was 
GES, Group Data Services. This is exactly what it is. It's central repository of data. How will you get all the healthcare actors, so the payers and the providers, to share that information and leave you as the custodian and not the government or some other entity? Well, you know, uh, Brian, I had to um, correct any misconception. If, if uh, you know, if there's if there's any out there that we're going to replace the role uh, of the regulators or the government agencies in, in storing this, those data, um, but the, just to take an example, right? A leave out of the page of uh, the Ping An Good Doctors or the Zoc Docs in the US, they through the provision of their services, right? Um, are able to store large, some uh, large um, um, data sets of the patients. So, assuming you know, just walking you through a journey, the patients will come, consult a doctor, receive prescription, go on to purchase the medications, have it delivered, make the claims with uh, the the payers, the payers and keep yeah. yeah, and keep repeating that. Uh, assuming that they are uh, a long term medication or chronic patient, right? Uh, throughout the monthly uh, cycles, that would mean that um, we'll they will will have you know will own those 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 multiple interactions and store those yeah. data, and be able to, again then to provide those data back to the patients right. So should they want to meet, meet another provider, they can always pull up their records at their fingertips and show this is what I was prescribed and this is what I've been consuming and here's the diagnosis for the the various uh, consults, and so. It's it's a, a approach that's going to be more of uh, requesting the, the patients to to make those decisions and then for them to request their their providers to uh, opt in, rather than us you know trying to to corral the the, the various uh, provider groups or the payer groups to put to put their information set onto our platform. So th that would that's going to be you know a hard task to to convince yeah, people to do so. Pragmatic. So you're building basically the data sets from transaction data. Correct, correct. And again, the names I mentioned to you earlier with the likes of ZogDog and Ping An Good Doctor, or even Practo India have turned out to be uh, the de facto uh, national health, health record registry in their respective countries. I mean, you know, obviously there are other various players, but it's just at the pace that they grow, uh, they've become, you know, uh, almost like a utility. Um, and I think that will serve the, the public uh, a, a lot of good. Tomorrow, it sounds like you've got a really good platform built over the last five years. What's the strategy for you? Because it sounds like you're, you're, you're heading to an exciting phase of growth. And for growth like that, you need money. What's your strategy in terms of funding all these initiatives? Right. So um, the, the last couple of years, um, has been, you know, uh, mostly self-funded, as I mentioned, and we've reached out to uh, family and friends and 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 business partners uh, to to take part in our growth story. And I think um, with the way we're moving forward um, and and the huge amount of traction that we're getting, which is translating to revenues, um, things are looking good. But nevertheless, there. Uh, to build this this maps of healthcare that we just mentioned to you, right? Uh, the digital healthcare exchange, and and then to make uh, big bets into uh, the new wave of technology that's coming onto healthcare, like uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, data analytics, and building our own, uh, um, you know, uh, cybersecurity uh, capability, will require heavy capex uh, investments, yep. and so we we are. Uh, in discussions right now with a select group of uh, venture uh, firms as well as platforms um, to decide what is the best way to actually um, have strategic investments into our platform, right? Uh, people who, who understand the, the long-term nature of healthcare, and understand the the great yields because you you just need to look at the healthcare assets such as IHH and 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 raffles uh, on the stock market and and understand that they they do have great multiples um, and they are great investments um, um, they do have great degree of stability uh, to the investments and um, and we would like to you know uh, onboard them and also benefit from 
from uh, the guidance and, and the insight that we can get from these parties. That sounds very interesting. But Maran, final question for you. What advice would you give entrepreneurs to, so that our audience can learn from the lessons and mistakes you and your team have made since you started, particularly because you've largely bootstrapped this business? Um, I, I would say the, 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 the key, if I were to reflect back, uh, the key strategy that we had that enabled us to take this this long-term view uh, in terms of investing, in terms of bootstrapping, and mind you, uh, the, the founding team uh, haven't received a salary for the last five years, uh, have, um, has been about getting a group of people who share the passion and share the vision, right? Um, be, it, be it the young developer, or, or the co-founder and, and the chief technology officer or the, the, the medical team, right? We've been blessed that um, we've had a, a fair amount of talent uh, in our country and, um, and people who, who really understood that they're here to make a difference, right? And there are case studies that shows that we can make a difference. And once they started drinking from this, that, that cool aid, uh, it, it then set the stage for us to actually uh, go for the marathon. And um, when the time comes, you know, it, it comes, right? And, and they were prepared also to, to cope with the sleepless nights in terms of, you know, uh, uh, working through and onboarding the partners and going for those, uh, for the hard yards. Maren, uh, on that note, thank you very much for taking the time to be on the show. Pleasure is mine. Now, I'm Brian Fernandez, and I've been speaking to Maran Virumandi. He's the managing director and founder of Doctor on Call on Vistech's technology show. Check out www.vistech.asia for business and technology conversations. <laughs>